Shalom and welcome to our continuing study in the many uses of the Aleph Tav. We're going to investigate today the fact that Aleph Tav also means you. This is a little difficult to discover in the use of the Strong's because even though there are four different words for you, um, the masculine singular, the feminine singular, the masculine plural, and the feminine plural, uh, they only have one Strong's number. So when we're looking at the masculine singular, it is ata, it has a hey at the end, as in Genesis 3.11. And you can see this a little bit better in the King James because of the thous and the these. Okay, the thous are singular and the yous are plural. Genesis 3.11. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Ata, hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? Another reason it's difficult to discern these things is because in the perfect and imperfect tense, you can tell by the conjugation which person is being referred to. And so many times the pronoun in Hebrew will not appear at all. But it does appear here, and it appears in Genesis 3.14. And Yahweh God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou, Ata, art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. The feminine form, the feminine singular, is where we see the Aleph Tav set off by itself. Genesis 12:11, And it came to pass... When he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou, At, art a fair woman to look upon. Genesis 24:23, And said, Whose daughter art thou, At? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? Uh, Abraham's servant is talking to Rebekah. The masculine plural is atem, and now instead of the thous, you're going to actually see the you and the ye, and that is a plural form in the Old English. Genesis 9, 7. And you, be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And in Genesis 26, 27. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to see me, seeing ye, Atem, hate me, and have sent me away from you. Um, there is a natural sense in the human being to want to have a plural you. And uh, regionally, as you travel, you will find different uh, variations. In, in New York, we used to say yous or yous guys. Uh, down south, we say all y'all for the plural of you. The feminine form, the feminine plural, appears in two um, styles, atenna and aten. And again, all these four forms only have one listing in the Strong's. Ezekiel 34, 31. And ye, I think this is the atenna, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord Yahweh. The word flock is pl uh, feminine, and that's why it becomes a feminine ye. Ezekiel 34, 17. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. If you have been following any of the previous videos concerning the use of the letters of the alphabet or if you're already um, familiar with this Hebrew grammar, Aleph is the first person prefix. It refers to I. So here we see in uh, Genesis, God says that it is not good for the man to be alone. And then he says, I will make. Eh, eh, said. That Aleph is for I will do something. Um, and then from Isaiah, the bad guy makes some speeches. And he says, I'm going to rise up into the heavens above all the uh, stars, 
of God. I'm going to lift up my chair and I'm going to sit on the Har Moed, on the sides of the north. E'ele, that Aleph, I will rise up. Arim, that Aleph, I will raise. Eshev, I will sit. So the Aleph is the first person. And the Tav is the second person, both for the prefix and the suffix. So again, in Genesis, um, God warns Adam. He says, uh, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, lo tochal. So that is an imperfect tav for the second person. He's talking to one man. He says, you will not eat from it. In the day you eat from it, mot tamut, you will die. In the other verse, uh, God is chastising him for having listened to the voice of his wife. And we can see the suffix, shamata, you listened. So it's interesting that uh, the Aleph and the Tav, the Aleph being the first person and the Tav being the second person, are combined together. And they are actually used as a pronoun for the second person. In the beginning, that's all there were. There was God and the man, the first person and the second person. And that was the relationship. Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. However, the male and female are one flesh, according to Genesis 2.24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. We see a picture of the Aleph being the Elohim. Again, the first cause, the thing that was and is and will be. And the Tav is the man. He's the end of creation. So the third person actually shows up in the garden. Genesis 3.11, and he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Now there's suddenly another person. It's no longer God and the human being, the human being who is one flesh, male and female, but now there's another person. The word for who in Hebrew is me, and we're going to find out that me is who, and who is he, and he is she. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, the woman, all of a sudden finger pointing is beginning, whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And this is the first use of these words. I know that they will appear in English um, in your translation, but this is the first use of the third person pronoun. We're just going to have a look at the third person pronoun as, as we begin to get into this. Uh, as I said, who is he? Genesis 4.4. 4. And Abel, who he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering. And in Genesis 4.26. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. And he who... He called his name Enosh, then began men to call upon the name of Yahweh. So this is a spelling, hey, vav, aleph, and it's usually um, pointed with that shuruk, that ooh sound, who. Under the same strongs, you will find it pointed differently. It might be pointed with the chirik and the vav, but sometimes the chirik and the yud, they're both pronounced he because he is she. Remember, me is who, who is he, and he is she. Genesis 25, said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself, that is he, she, said he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart, in the innocency of my hands, have I done this. Ruth 1.3. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she, he, she, was left with her two sons. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? 
Now the plurals do have separate strong numbers for the masculine plural. This is a third person. Then we're talking about they, a bunch of people that are over there. It's either hem or hemma. Uh, we see in Genesis 3, 7. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they, hem, they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Genesis 7, 14. They, hem, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird after his sort. The feminine plural uh, is of they is also appears in these two forms, henna and hen. Genesis 41, 19, And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean flesh, such as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt for badness. I think the henna there appears as the such, um, they, those kind of cows I have never seen. Genesis 6, 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them of all which they chose. The daughters, uh, the wives, are henna, I believe, right there. So we're just um, dipping into this a little bit. And next time we will uh, expound more on the spiritual ramifications of what it means, all of Tav, in the beginning, and what the future will bring. In the meantime, Tasimit Ha'inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.